Hi, I'm Jenny Brown, Sales Director at Mortgages for Business, and welcome to our weekly Buy to Let Mortgage Market Update. A warm welcome from Paxos. We're on a small island just off of Corfu. Um, very, very small island. It's absolutely beautiful here, very, very hot. Um, yeah, really nice uh, time away. I know we're incredibly lucky to be coming somewhere where there's an air corridor this year, which we booked um, way before all of the coronavirus um, situation happened. Um, but obviously delighted to be on holiday here. Um, unfortunately, the villa that we're staying in is currently without any water, um, which we haven't had for about 24 hours now. So we're just contemplating whether we're going to stay or go and find somewhere else to spend the rest of our time here. Um, but a beautiful island nonetheless, and obviously lovely to be away and enjoying some sunshine. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, in terms of what's been happening in the last week, um, a few bits of movement from lenders in terms of pricing. Um, so first of all, we've seen Aldermore Mortgages, um, what they call streamlining their product range, essentially withdrawing some of their products. And what they've done is remove all of those products which have, which have flat arrangement fees or no arrangement fees at all, which means that they're now left with products which are still available to 75% loan to value, but all of their products have percentage charge arrangement fees. Now, Aldermore are able to lend to individuals and limited companies. They've got a really good proposition in terms of the things they will accept. Um, but I think probably what's happened is they've been fairly um, snowed under in terms of new applications. And so they've removed some of their more um, attractive products to try and just keep the business volumes down. Now, what we've also seen is foundation home loans reduce pricing across six of their products and they're now offering limited company rates at 75% loan to value on a five-year fixed at 3.49% with a 2% arrangement fee. Now they've also introduced a new product for large loans at 65% loan to value and a large loan in their world is anything that's over half a million pounds worth of borrowing and this is fixed for five years at 3.14% with a 2.25% arrangement fee. Now, in terms of foundation, they again lend to individuals and limited companies. They have some fairly neat pieces of lending criteria. Um, for me, the keys are that they are really able to lend to landlords with large portfolios. And in our world, large means anything over 10 properties in the background. Um, but also, um, what they do do, which we really like, is they're not as reliant on credit scoring as maybe some other lenders are. So what they're able to do is for those landlords with good clean credit profiles but actually just have a low score, they're able to proceed with those guys and lend to them on their much lower interest rates. Now lastly in terms of lending news this week, we've seen Santander increase their buy to debt rates by 0.3%. Um, now their rates are still very good, um, they're only available to individuals so not limited companies and landlords with the smaller portfolios, so those with less than 10. Um, but despite the rate increase, their products are still relatively competitive. So in terms of the um, movements from the lenders this week, not huge amounts in terms of criteria changes and some upward pricing movements by the foundation home loans. But like I said earlier on with regards to Aldermore, I think this is really in reaction to the sheer volume of business these guys have coming in at the moment um, because of the uptick in the housing market, which we'll come on to in just a minute. Um, so yeah, so I think realistically we're just seeing lenders reacting to the demand to try and keep business volumes down so their service levels don't then ultimately suffer. Moving on to housing market news now. So the housing market has gained further momentum in July and this is according to the latest um, RICS residential survey results. So with, this is where they poll um, actual surveyors in terms of their um, sentiment and what they're experiencing with regards to the housing market. Now, what they've come back and updated us on is that plus 75% of survey respondents noted an increase in new buyer inquiries um, over the month, making, marking the second consecutive month in which demand has rebounded firmly following lockdown. Similarly, new listings, um, some new housing listings for sale, rose sharply with plus 59% of respondents reporting a rise up in new properties for sale. Alongside this, a net balance of plus 57% of respondents saw a rise in agreed sale sales over the last month. Now, the report goes on to say that looking ahead, the near-term expectations are signalling continued growth in sales um, at the headline level over the next three months. However, further out, 12-month sale projections remain negative. Now, also in the report, um, turning to house prices, the survey's uh, headline gauge of price growth moved out of negative territory 
for the first time since March, with a net balance of plus 12% of respondents reporting an increase in house prices in July. Now, this has further been underpinned with data showing that there were 6,000 viewings carried out in July for so prospective house buyers, um, which is around 200 per day, incidentally, a third of which were carried out virtually. Offers made and accepted were up 12% and sale instructions rose by 22% in July from June. So really just going on to continue the theme with regards to the housing market being incredibly busy. Um, lots of people viewing and looking to acquire things and new homes coming to the market, but also with a continued concern that um, come particularly um, spring 2021 when the stamp duty holidays end, there are some concerns about what will happen to house prices at this point. The number of homeowner mortgage arrears and the number of properties taken into possession fell in quarter two as mortgage lenders granted over 2 million mortgage payment deferrals. So there were 73,580 homeowner mortgages in arrears of 2.5% of the outstanding balance and more, 3% fewer in the same quarter of 2019. Um, so essentially, the number of people who are facing mortgage arrears has actually come down because of the mortgage deferral um, facility. Now, interestingly, there were 5,000 buy-to-let mortgages in arrears, which is 6% greater than the same quarter of the previous year. Now, UK Finance have commented that the increase in arrears on buy-to-let is very small and is starting from a low base, and they've attributed this to the early effects of COVID-19. So in terms of what this tells us, I guess really what it's showing is that there are an increasing number of landlords, despite the mortgage payment uh, deferral option being available, um, moving into arrears. And I do suspect, unfortunately, that we could see more of this happen going forwards as more landlords are put under financial pressure owing to, um, first of all, tenants um, not being able to pay their rent, but also their own personal financial situations away from the rental income potentially becoming more difficult. So on that note, if you are in the position where you are facing any um, difficulties with regards to um, making mortgage payments or indeed managing your finances more roundly, there are lots of places where you can go to get advice. Um, obviously, at Mortgages for Business, we would be delighted to have a chat with you and see how we can help. And you can always give us a call to discuss that, um, 0345 345 6788. But likewise, if you are struggling to um, meet the payments on your mortgages, um, a good bit of advice is always to immediately reach out to your mortgage lender and have a conversation with them about this. Um, there's a huge amount of onus on mortgage lenders to be sympathetic and supportive um, to their borrowers in times of financial difficulty. So you will find that you are um, treated with an element of sympathy and understanding and with a desire to reach a resolution in terms of supporting you going forwards. So there you go, that's the news from the buy -to mortgage market for this week. Um, I'll still be in Paxos um, in a week's time, so I'll be updating you on the running water saga, hopefully we'll have some by then, um, otherwise I have a strong suspicion we would have vacated this property for somewhere else. Um, yeah, so look, as always, if you do have any questions, do give us a call and do go and have a look at our website, mortgagesforbusiness.co.uk. There's lots of information there, um, stamp duty calculators, how much can I borrow calculators, case studies, blogs, all that kind of stuff. It's really, really useful. And until next week, do look after yourselves um, and stay safe. Yeah, and I'll speak to you in a week's time. Mm -hmm.